during his ministry here upon the earth, as the Savior taught the people, he counseled them, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. What do we consider to be the scriptures? One dedicated student explained, any message, whether written or spoken, that comes from God to man by the power of the Holy Ghost is scripture. If it is written and accepted by the church, it becomes part of the scriptures or standard works, and ever thereafter may be read and studied with profit. President Kimball has urged us to study the scriptures when he suggested, let us this year seek to read and understand and apply the principles and inspired counsel found within the scriptures. If we do so, we shall discover that our personal acts of righteousness will also bring personal revelation or inspiration when needed in our own lives. President Lee, he recommended a daily reading of the scriptures he taught us, testimonies need to be nourished and, uh, nourished and fed. If we're not reading the scriptures daily, our testimonies are growing thinner. Our spirituality isn't increasing in depth. Joseph Smith, although but a youth, was an earnest a student of the scriptures. In one of the offices in the church office building, there's a painting showing Joseph seated in a chair in his bedroom with a Bible in his hands. On such an occasion, he und undoubtedly read the, the passage of Scripture located in James. This passage gave him the guideline he ne needed to answer some very grave questions that concerned him. We all know that passage. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be, be given him. Joseph Smith accepted this invitation, as he had a most important decision to make. In retiring to a secluded spot on the, in the grove of trees on his father's farm, he knelt and prayed earnestly for an answer to his problem. Unexpectedly, he was visited by heaven, our Heavenly Father and His Son, the resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This dramatic present visitation was the first revelation in this dispensation. The knowledge and use of the scriptures are important in our lives. A prominent church educator many years ago taught the scriptures are signboards leading to eternal life. As Latter-day Saints, we accept the following scriptures as the standard works of the church. We, first, we have the Bible. And it consists of the Old and the New Testament, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, the Pearl of the Great Price, and official statements made by our leaders. Regarding the Bible, there is a misconception that the Bible is one book instead of a collection of 66 books, 39 of which comprise the Old Testament, and 27 constitute the New Testament. Now, since the books are so numerous, the period covered so great, about 2,500 years from Moses to St. John, and the books being comp uh, composed by so many writers, there is a vast variety in the materials presented. The first five books of the Old Testament contain an early record of the Hebrew race, and are described by Josephus and other authorities to have been written by Moses. These books are called the Pentateuch. The Book of Mormon, as we know, was translated by Joseph Smith from golden plates in the custody of the angel Moroni. This book contains a record of the Lord's dealings temporally and spiritually 
with the ancient peoples who dwelt in these lands of America. It also gives the beautiful account of the appearance of the resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the people which is most inspiring. The Doctrine and Covenants contains revelations given to Joseph Smith, the prophet, with some additions by his successors in the presidency of the Church. One addition I examined recently pointed out that certain lessons entitled Lectures on Faith, which are bound in with the Doctrine and Covenants in some of its former issues, are not included in this edition. These lessons were prepared for use in the School of the Elders, which is conducted in Kirtland, Ohio, during the winter of 1834 and 1835. But they were never presented to nor accepted by the Church as being otherwise than theological lessons or lect lectures or lessons. Now, the Pearl of Great Price presently, of course, contains a selection from the revelations, translations, and narrations of Joseph Smith, which includes, first, eight chapters known as the Book of Moses. Now, the material contained in the first chapter was revealed in June 1830. The materials in the next seven chapters were revealed in December 1830. Second is the Book of Abraham, which consists of five chapters. These were the writings of Abraham and also Joseph of Egypt. They are translated by Joseph Smith from two, to uh, two rolls of papyrus that were found in coffins with four mummies and were discovered in the catacombs of Egypt by Antonio Cibolo, the celebrated French traveler in 1831. Third in the Pearl of the Great Price are the writings of Joseph Smith, mainly taken from his history. Then fourth, the Articles of Faith. These are from a letter that the prophet wrote to John Wentworth who is writing history of the state of New Hampshire. New scriptures have recently been added to the Pearl of Great Price. The last general conference held in April 1976, President Tanner made this announcement, quote, President Kimball has asked me to read a very important resolution for your sustaining vote. At a meeting of the Council of the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve held in the Salt Lake Temple on March the 25th, 1976, approval was given to add to the Pearl of Great Price the following two revelations. First, a vision of the celestial kingdom given to Joseph Smith the prophet in the Kirtland Temple on January the 21st, 1836 which deals with the salvation of those who die without a knowledge of the gospel. And second, a vision given to President Joseph F. Smith in Salt Lake City, Utah, on October the 3rd, 1918, showing the visit of the Lord Jesus Christ in the spirit world between his crucifixion and resurrection and setting forth the doctrine of the redemption of the dead. Yesterday, as we sustained the general authorities, we sustained designated ones as prophets, seers, and revelators. We firmly believe that they receive revelation from the Lord. President Lee said to us, In this day, the scriptures are purest at their source. Just as, the mountain or just as the waters were purest at the mountain source, the purest word of God, and that least apt to be polluted, is that which comes from the lips of the living prophets who are set up to guide Israel in our own day and time." End the quotation. We should search the scriptures and ponder over the truths contained in them. 
for they are the words leading to eternal life. I bear solemn witness, solemn testimony that inspired men are leading the Church today. Let us hearken to their voices and obey their teachings, for which I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.